Hello scholars, my name is Dr. Kara Stillen and the goal of this channel is to make academic subjects easier to understand. In the last video, we looked at human development and various stages of prenatal development. In this video, we're going to look at motivation and emotion. So let's get started. What is motivation? Well, motivation consists of a person's needs or wants that drive them toward a specific goal. Motivations can be biological, can be intrinsic, which means that factors arise from within the person, or extrinsic, which means that factors arise outside of the person. Psychologists recognize that most people are motivated by external and internal forces. What this means is that we're motivated by what satisfies us internally and by the recognition or rewards we might gain from accomplishing something. When psychologists study motivation over time, they continue to find the same result when it comes to what human beings perceive as work. Time after time, when humans perceive something as work, their motivations towards achieving it and seeing it as satisfactory are diminished. Scientists also acknowledge that there's an over-justification effect, meaning that intrinsic motivation lessens when extrinsic motivation is given. What this means is that the minute we start getting paid or recognized for something, it decreases our internal motivation to continue accomplishing that item. For those of you that are teachers, important studies in motivation have found that when students feel respect and belonging in the classroom, they're more likely to experience a love of learning and wanting to do better for themselves. It's really important that students feel like they have some control over what is going on in the classroom. Challenging assignments can definitely play a role in increasing motivation for students. A highly collaborative classroom culture where students work together well also increases intrinsic motivation. So who were some of the first psychologists to study motivation? Well, William James, who's often seen as the father of psychology, was one of the first to study motivation. At the time, scholars were calling certain behaviors instincts, and he argued they were not. James sought to show these individuals that these behaviors were learned. Just like other behaviors, motivations can be learned through a variety of sources. Other theories about psychological motivations contend that because the human body seeks homeostasis, when the body is drawn away from it, a physiological need arises for balance, and humans begin to seek it by meeting certain standards or goals. These goals can be met through habits, which are patterns of behavior that we regularly take part in. Certain behaviors can reduce our physiological drives, and when there's an imbalance, we tend to engage in those behaviors again. Another theory of motivation states that we all have a certain level of arousal that human beings attempt to maintain. When we're bored or we're looking for some sort of stimulation, we're definitely under-aroused. When we're overwhelmed with things around us, we can be over-aroused. Essentially, psychologists believe that most people seek out moderate arousal in their own lives. Self-efficacy definitely plays a role in motivation. Self-efficacy is a person's belief in their own abilities to complete a goal or task. Psychologist Albert Bandura stated that a person's belief in whether or not they can complete a task impacts their motivation. Bandera believed that our self-efficacy not only impacts our motivation, but it also defines whether or not we create future goals for ourselves. Extrinsic reasons also impact motivations for accomplishing goals. Affiliation, achievement, and intimacy can be social reasons that impact motivation. Affiliation can impact positive interactions with others, and many people enjoy deep and meaningful relationships. One of the most relevant theories concerning motivation has to do with Abraham Maslow's hierarchy of needs. Maslow believed that all human beings have needs that range from very basic to quite complex. At the bottom are needs that are biological and physiological, including thirst, hunger, and shelter. The top need is self-actualization, which can mean a person's fulfillment within life. One of the items that definitely plays a role in motivation is hunger. We know that there are physiological mechanisms that take place in the body that let us know that we're hungry. Our stomachs can contract, which then send chemical messages to the brain, which tell us it's time to feed ourselves. Another body signal is when the blood glucose drops, 
which causes the pancreas and liver to create signals to induce hunger. The liver and pancreas send signals to the brain when we are hungry or are satisfied. Generally, most people stop eating when they are satiated. As food passes through the gastrointestinal system, it gives signals to the brain for various fat cells to release leptin, which helps us to feel full. It is the hindbrain and specifically the hypothalamus that helps us to feel full. Our human emotions definitely impact various motivations that we have as human beings. Emotions are a subjective state that most of us say are our feelings. Emotions can come from situational factors, can result from us ourselves, can come from praise, might be the result of physiological responses due to neurotransmitters, etc. Emotions can be displayed in nonverbal and verbal ways. Two people can experience the same exact or external situation and have opposite emotions. There are different theories that have been studied concerning where emotions come from. The James Lang theory contends that emotions come from physiological arousal. Essentially, the sympathetic nervous system is involved in emotions. The Cannon Bard theory says that physiological arousal and emotional experience is different and separate from one another. The way you feel emotionally about something can be different from how you physiologically react to something. Magda Arnold created a theory where he believed a person has to create thoughts and then can describe emotions. Your emotion is dependent upon your thoughts. This can explain how people who experience the same situation can have different thoughts. Many psychologists have also noted how culture can impact the manner in which people experience emotion. There are certain emotions that are seen as culturally acceptable. There can also be differences in gender as far as what is considered socially acceptable. Emotion can be seen through a person's facial expressions, the tone of their voice, certain behaviors, and also through body language. Psychological research shows that most human beings are very sensitive to body language, whether or not they know it. Before we end our video, let's do a quick quiz to see what you learned. Question 1. This is the vocabulary term for when a person's needs and wants help to drive them toward a goal. Is it A. Emotion, B. Affiliation, C. Achievement, or D. Motivation? The answer is motivation. Question number two. These are factors such as compensation, rewards, and or punishments. Is it A, intrinsic motivation or B, extrinsic motivations? The answer is B, extrinsic motivations. Question three. This means that intrinsic motivation is lessened when extrinsic motivation is given. Is it over justification effect over judgment effect, the James Lang theory, or D, the Cannon Bard theory? The answer is over justification effect A. Question four. This means the stomach's contracting, a drop in glucose, and the pancreas and liver secrete chemical messages which are sent to the brain. This is known as the A, Cannon Bard theory, B, hunger, C, motivation, or D, emotion? The answer is hunger. Question five, this is not one of Abraham Maslow's hierarchy of needs. Is it A, physiological needs, B, safety needs, C, self-actualization, or D, emotional needs? The answer is D, emotional needs. Well, that is the end of our video on motivation and emotion. I hope this helps you in your psychology classes or if you just like to hear more about human beings and their uniqueness. If you like the video, please continue to support us by hitting that like button and don't forget to subscribe. And I will talk with you soon.